Hi everyone. Today we have an old friend of mine, Ifa. Hi Ifa. Welcome to I am Recruiter podcast. Uh and thank you so much for your time. I know you have a busy schedule but still you took out some time for us. Really appreciate that. And with that I would like if I to have a quick introduction about yourself so yeah. that audience can learn more about you. Perfect. Always happy to connect with an, with an old friend. Um, so yeah, so my name is Aoife. Um, I'm currently working with Cloudera as a senior manager for talent acquisition uh, for technical recruiting uh, covering EMEA and EMER. And I am based in Cork in Ireland. Um, I've been with Cloudera for almost five years now. Great. So, so uh, can you quickly also give a little bit about your background? Like where are you from? Like when did you start your journey as a recruiter? where you initially started from a recruiter or like from some other role and then moved to recruitment and then senior manager talent acquisition how was your journey um, so i originally started working in sales so okay. started working in sales god i think back in maybe like 2013 2012 2013 around that time um, and then i moved into recruiting back in 2015 um, okay. originally focusing on more like sourcing side of things. Um, I wasn't actually originally in technical recruiting, so I was originally doing finance. Um, okay. Then we moved to Dublin, and then I ended up um, starting my journey in technical recruiting, um, focusing on contract recruiting as well. So daily rate contractors um, in the Irish market. Um, then I moved back to Cork, and then I started doing more of the like software development, um, sourcing and recruiting. Um, for customers in Ireland on the agency site. Uh, so did that for a couple of years and then I moved to Cladera, um back in April 2019. So joined just after the Cladera Horton North merger. Um, as yes. you remember, it was crazy. Yes, of <laughs> course. It was crazy, great fun. Um, so I started out as um, a senior recruiter and then after about a year I moved into a lead recruiter role there, um, which was great fun so I remember my manager at the time telling me you have to do the job to get the job so I was like unofficially doing the job for a while first um before I officially moved into that role um then I took over as the manager for technical recruiting for EMEA and um, for engineering product and support and um, so was in that role for like I guess about two years then and um, then Last year, I got promoted into a senior manager role, and then my role expanded to cover uh, the MR region as well, which is really exciting to do something something new and a bit more of a challenge. And very, very, very impressive journey, I would say, like from sales to then sourcing role to recruiter, then senior recruiter, and then now currently, finally, as senior manager, that to not only in EMEA, but also America region, right? So, like, uh, many audience generally come back to us and say, like, how, how is it, like, is it necessary for someone to have some similar qualification to become a recruiter or anyone can become a recruiter? So, what's your perspective or thought on that? I think anyone can do it if they have the right, well, anyone can do it because they're so successful doing the role, that's a different thing. Um, I think a lot of it is about, like, what you put in. Um, I definitely think with technical recruiting, it's really important to have an interest in the types of roles you're working in, in technology itself, to be interested in learning about like what's up and coming, what's new, um, what kind of what kind of tools are the engineers using, um, what kind of tools are we using, what technology we're using, learning a bit more about like a product roadmap, what's next for us, and just being like genuinely inquisitive um and just like asking loads of questions so like wanting to learn off people putting your hand up and like getting involved in stuff that you don't really know or understand um i always think that's really really important as well so that you're never like just like want to do the same thing over and over again but you like you want want to learn more you want to do more um i think that's really important as well that's just my opinion <laughs> my career is uh, in sales role similar to like you 
<laughs> but <laughs> but even like for me uh, i was not a sales person so i i felt that i was more of a people person so i moved to yeah. recruiting uh and again what i felt like definitely learning things and exploring and going with the flow is definitely required right uh, yes. we should definitely have a good attitude to learn right the appetite to learn new things which is yeah. great okay so like you have been seen uh, being a management side you have been a manager now for some time you have been a recruiter so how is it different for a recruiter to become a manager or a senior manager like all the time as well it's like you have to learn that you don't have to do everything yourself that like you're going to your team you're giving them additional responsibilities you know like you're responsible for their not entirely but you're you have a big involvement in like their growth and their professional development so like just to learn to like not have to do everything yourself like delegate give stuff yeah. to other people i found at the start when i first moved into it i was trying to do everything um and i was like hurting myself out a little bit <laughs> so it was kind of like going okay like you know i need i need my team to learn to take on this additional responsibility you know it's good for them and they want to be they want it to be yes. involved they want to take on this additional like tasks and work and stuff like that um so i think that was kind of my initial kind of like oh what do i do here <laughs> type type moment um so yeah but then like you get to learn so much more you get to be involved in a lot of other stuff um i think you get to see how things work at a higher level as well. Yes. Yes. Great. I'm not the kind of person who like does something because this is the way it's been done. I like to look at things and go how can we do it better? Like what like what are we doing right now that's not really working or isn't working optimally and can add value. Well. Great great yeah. insights I would say. Like for every new manager it's very important to know how to delegate the task right even i, I would say that even i face the same situation like yeah. you know, <laughs> initially we are loaded with work we were not knowing how to delegate the yeah. task and all and yeah. and it takes lots of our time because of that right yeah 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 it's it's learning it's all, it's important i think it's always important to like ask other people who are in the same kind of role as you for like their opinions as well like you don't necessarily have to do what somebody else tells you they would do but i think it's good to like be able to like learn from other people get see other perspectives and then kind of help use that to like make your own decisions as well yes. yeah i'm not i don't i don't believe that my way is always the best way i like to like see what, what other people would do and yes. then Yeah, but again, like, like uh, the shift from a recruiter to a manager, the mindset shift might take a little bit while time. Yeah. I mean, it needs lots of practice because sometimes you can do the things very faster by yourself if you do. But yes. if you delegate <laughs> someone, <laughs> but if you delegate someone, they have their own sweet time. They yeah. they think on their own way. So yeah. again, like we should definitely have lots and lots of patience, right? Yeah, yeah, and like, like sometimes the way that they decide to do things or the their input is better than what you would have came up with as well. So like yeah. you have to like enable people to like do things themselves or like make decisions too. Like you can't manage them, I guess. Or yeah, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's about like enabling them, and they're never going to like grow or like be confident in like their own ability if you are doing everything for them. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. I I would agree. Definitely, we have to put them into a tough situation so that they can learn yeah. and evolve from those tough situation, yeah. which is required yeah. for everyone. I would say. Yeah, yeah, and not always just giving people the answer as well. Like I think sometimes when people come to me with like questions, I'm like, what What do you think you should do? Or what do you think is the right way to go about this? Instead of just going do this, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Ad- ad- otherwise, uh, if we keep on giving them like our idea, they will be copied of us, right? Instead of using their own <laughs> mind. <laughs> One of me is enough. <laughs> like what you generally love to do uh, in terms of when you are not recruiting or not hiring or not working. Uh I love playing soccer and um, so I played soccer since I was probably football I don't know yeah soccer football yep, football yep. um I played probably since I was like under 6s 
<laughs> yeah. So really, really enjoy playing sports. Um, I train, I coach my son's soccer team as well. So awesome. yeah, I enjoy that. I enjoy that. Sometimes I don't enjoy 20 screaming kids on a Saturday morning, but it's good. It's extra time that I can spend with my son and hopefully like we'll have the same interest then as well. Um, so that like, we can all watch sports then as a family. Yeah. Um, I like to run, big runner, um, love going for a run in the morning, bought a treadmill during COVID when the gym's closed and it gets used a lot. Probably need a new one now at this stage. Um, and I love reading. Yeah, so if I don't, if I'm not running first thing in the morning, I'm probably lying in bed reading a book. <laughs> and what about like how your typical uh, weekend look like? Uh, it changes. <laughs> yeah, it's always different. Um, usually my Saturday mornings are soccer with my son. Um, this weekend it's like preseason for my team, for my like women's team at the moment. So mm-hmm. I have a friendly match this Sunday. So first match of the year. Um, the last time I haven't played a match since August, since the end of August. Yeah, so my legs will be sore on Monday. <laughs> so all the best for your soccer. And you. would, would love to see some pick from your game though, once you play. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great. Okay, now like we also talk about like lots of different things about our journey. Now, uh, like, from your experiences, right, you have some of the challenging time, plus you have some of your achievements in your journey. Right? Can you uh, share some of your achievement as well as some of your challenging moments? I've got the opportunity to work on some, I suppose, interesting projects as well. So, and with different groups, like globally too. So last year I worked on the uh, new higher orientation program um, for Calder that we revamped. So that was that was quite exciting. Um, just to like work with different teams and work with different teams globally as well, um, and do something that I hadn't done before. So that was that was that was really good, um, and something I'm proud of because it's like doing something that's like outside of my comfort zone. Yeah. Um, what else am I proud of? I'm proud of my team. So my team have, have been like amazing. Like last year when like hiring slowed down, they all got involved in different projects that were like outside of their normal day-to-day stuff. So look at just like improving some of the existing processes we had. Um, so I'm proud of them and like how they jumped in and got involved with different things. Um, they've, and just, the, the way they are, they what they they always help out people when people come to them for help. Um, they always look for more to do. If I ask them to go and work on something completely different that they've never done before, they're excited about that. They have a great leader, and because of them, I think you you got a great team as well, right? <laughs> because them, I'm not taking any credit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great. And in terms of challenging wise, like, have you faced any kind of challenges in your recruitment journey and how did you overcome those? I think a challenge for me is that I am so impatient. Yeah. So I always want things to happen like straight away. I have no patience. So I'm always like, go, go, go. And I think it's hard to realize for me as well that I found challenging is realizing that not everyone is the same as that and that I need to be patient and know when to push and know when to hold as yeah. well um, I found I suppose the biggest challenge I probably think I probably think I went through myself would be when we had like a reduction in force as well so like having to say goodbye to like people who were who were part of the team who were like great members of the team so that like it wasn't performance related and that was my first time going through that so I found that really challenging as well just to I I think uh, like many people might see the good things uh, if you become a manager but again it's not an easy job right you have to keep your team motivated and again like uh, we we, uh, first of all we are dealing with ourselves like from (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> from a recruiter to a manager and after yeah. that like you have to manage a like whole new team 
completely and all unknown to you right like yeah. you may know them but you might not know inside of it's a different capacity it's a new relationship and i think when you're in an organization where you grow into that role as well that the dynamics between people who were like your peers and now they now report to you um i didn't find that as challenging i think that was more challenging for me than than anyone else um but that was definitely like an experience and something that we go through um i think as well it's like it there's you don't work with everyone in the same way they don't have the same needs everyone is different everyone reacts to things differently as well so i think you need to be like that kind of person that like you know how to like communicate with different people you know how to support them you know where to step in and when to stand back and all that kind of stuff and a lot of times that's trial and error that's learning as well so you don't like automatically know what way to do these things a lot of times it's more like learning more about your team and like getting involved in like different programs that are available to you as well so like we have like manager foundation program here and um, i thought that that was really really good for me to do at the start when i first moved into management and to like sign up to a lot of the other like lnd programs um, that have been available um because then you're you're seeing other people's perspectives on like stuff yeah. that they went through and then it kind of helps you when you come to those challenges as well you can learn from other people experiences as well right when you go through such programs and i think it's very important for every organization to have those kind of foundation program uh to i from ic to manager movement and right it's yeah. very important. yeah it's a learning curve <laughs> i would say i'm glad that i made that transition and it's something that i've really enjoyed and enjoyed that kind of development and growth and everything that comes with responsibility and everything else that comes with it um but it's definitely it's it's not easy it's definitely tough you have to constantly motivate your team right and in this uh, rough time right when you have to uh, reduce your team and all even we are human right we don't want to do that but yeah. again, it's a business call right we have yeah. to do that right? yeah. uh, and sometimes people don't understand they they think that it's just a manager call right yeah. so that might not be the case if you need yeah. to give a tip to any of the recruiter across the globe like what is that one tip you would like to uh, give to the recruiters to become successful like sign up for stuff do stuff that's outside of your comfort zone um build relationships with people in in different lines of business in your own wider org so within HR be it with your HR VP team with your comms team which HR services L&D D&I like all the different groups that are within your own group but within the different groups that you support um and ask questions yes 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 so uh like even like in most of the discussion with my team or let's say with any of the podcast which i do like most of the time i i used to hear that definitely networking or building relationships is very important right yeah. so any tips uh for the recruiters or anyone how we can start building relationship with other have regular one to ones like i'm not saying you need to meet with every single person every single week but like having your monthly check in reaching out to people asking their questions asking them questions getting to know them seeing what the best way for you to like partner with them and work with them um for i found that to work for me um and like asking when we are signing up to different programs that are like business wide that that's how you can get to get to know more people in different groups learn more build relationships with people um, definitely if any recruiters would follow this uh, tips he or she will be definitely successful i would say like building relationship is definitely must and uh, most of the time even in the meetings and all right uh, what we used to hear as a managers or you need to ask questions right which can be right or wrong but if you ask question like at least you will get some kind of responses right yeah. which is required yeah 
maybe it's like speaking on a team all hands or something yeah. like that that you know they're getting the opportunity to like grow themselves to do something a bit different to build their own brand um, you have mentioned about building your own brand like like what do you see and how do you see building brand is important these days or is it okay kind of thing so important yeah i think it's so important for like just how how external candidates perceive you as like a company um i think it's important for putting your culture out there so like candidates can get an idea of like what what it's like to work there like through a certain lens i suppose what they can see like what it's like to be say you're a cradle point so what's it like to work at cradle point why would they why should they be excited to work there i think it gets more traffic to like your career page um it gets candidates a bit more like inquisitive about like what your company actually does so like we've had a great talent branding team at, at Caldera who have like created some fantastic content for us and the increase in traffic that it's created um in like direct applicants and referrals and everything like that is unbelievable so yeah. I think it's like genuine and real about it as well um because then I think people kind of they build like a bond to some level with with your organization um I think definitely these days like if you see right in LinkedIn or any other place in social media platform right lots of people are trying their best to build their own brand as well yeah. right and again if we go back to the next point which uh, if I have already mentioned it's about like building relationship right so building a brand is also related to building a relationship with your candidate or with your stakeholder or across your network right Okay, yeah. and so the following question I have here is like, since we are talking about candidates, right? So any advice or any suggestion you have for your candidates or any candidates who are part of the recruitment journey? I think that it is really important for candidates to do some research on like what your what the company they're applying for is are doing. Um, have a look at even like if they have like a live page on LinkedIn that you know see what's what's going on um, so that I think that helps them with the types of questions that they would ask during the interviews um, ask specific questions as well don't ask like generic questions that everyone asks so you know ask questions that I suppose that you really want to know so uh, like Qual- like qualify the company as well so that you know you're seeing whether it's a match for you um and yeah be prepared because like if uh, candidates are uh, like taking out some time of their busy <laughs> schedule for interviews we as a recruiter have to respect their time as well by providing feedback right yeah. and right. a very great point which you have mentioned about like preparedness about like how the company is what's the culture it have and all those things you have to do research before applying to any role great yeah. so uh, again uh, i'm just moving to uh, a next topic which is about ai so again like when we are talking about branding we are talking about lots of other stuff again ai come into picture as well right so what do you think about ai and how it is associated with recruitment and do you think AI will make life easy or difficult for us? I think if we use it in the right way, then it can be such a great tool. So, you know, like to automate a lot of the like repetitive tasks that we do, um, like that will give us such more time to focus on like more meaningful work and more important tasks then as well. Um, so I think it, if it's used in the right way, it can be like super, super beneficial um, and responsibly. Um, I don't, I think as automation and tool, AI tools come into play a lot more, I think it will lead to like our roles evolving to doing stuff that in a way we haven't had time to do in the past because yes. we spent so much time doing more like manual pieces manual of work and um, i know people like i've seen like polls and stuff and it's like would you rather speak to ai or a person and i'm like i just don't think it has that personal touch you're not giving like 
firsthand experiences like from recruiting as like to candidates with like what it's actually like to work there like I just don't see it being the same it's that personal touch is so is so important yes and I still think people like talking to people example of like when we are working uh, from home during the covid time right we used to miss those kind of human touch or human bonding yeah. right yeah. Uh, when we used to go to office and have tea chat or coffee chat or just a small break right different. and then you're going to get used to it and then when you're yeah. trying to go back into it it's like oh okay <laughs> so during covid time we have done different things which we in normal life we wouldn't have done or yeah. we ha- it have made us realize lots of different things as well right like the importance of family the importance of life or like how time should be spent and all those things like right getting making yourself busy like finding new ways of doing things finding new interests i think we have we had more time than we were ever used to having yes. and we have we have to like adapt to that so it's it's very different now it's kind of like a bit of a halfway point between the old yeah, and, yeah which is good Definitely. Now coming back to your soccer game, right? So, what made you uh, learn soccer in your younger age, Ifa? I think it was like the sports that we played at lunchtime in school. Okay. So, we all got like really, really into it. And my my father had like played on a team back then. And okay. Then I originally played on like a mixed team. Uh, it was mostly boys, but oh, yeah. there was like. me and my cousin were the two girls on the team um and then quite near where we're from uh, originally they set up like a girls team so okay. we started playing with with that team then and then my dad ended up being the coach afterwards okay. yeah okay. i think maybe from maybe under 7s or under 8s my dad ended up coaching us um so he was like coaching me and my three sisters <laughs> at one stage yeah So I think that was where the interest came from like we, my dad would be a big soccer fan we would have been watching it on the weekends and during the week if it was like Champions League or whatever at home so I think that was part of the driver of it but I really enjoyed it um, during uh, our school right even I we used to play football and all and I yeah. I used to be kind of a goal goalkeeper so and in it was back in school days but I, even I used to love but after school again everything got uh, everyone got busy when i got busy yeah and like the hobby or like the sports keep changing and evolving right but good to know that you have kept it for such a long time i stopped playing for a couple of years as well after when i was pregnant when i had my son and then i went back i went back playing when i turned 29 but it's good for health as well right you are doing lots of different activities yeah yeah yeah, yeah definitely i think it's good to help with if you are frustrated um as yes. well as stressed and stuff like that and i think it's really important to do something for yourself as well so like that's one thing i do that is for me so it's not work related so it's not for for someone else it's not for my family it's for me so i think that's really important is to like have something that's like part of your own identity and that you do for you I think I think it's really rewarding as well. I can well. see that the way you were talking from about <laughs> oh, <laughs> love, love for soccer, right? I can yeah. see that. I can feel that from your the way you are <laughs> all that expressive. Yeah. <laughs> great, great. Okay, now moving to the next question we have, right? Uh, what do you think about diversity, right? Why it's important for any individual, right? and why this days most of the company are focusing on diversity hiring it is really important i think it's really important just for people as individuals to have like a diverse group around them um so that they can learn about p- different ways of thinking different cultures um everything um like if everyone thought the same way then nothing would ever evolve because the yep. only would be the same way of doing things um whereas if you have many different perspectives on like how to solve problems or how to do things then i think things advance will advance much faster because there'll be a better way of doing things that wouldn't have been thought of before yes. um 
and it's just it's it's just it's it's I think it's better for everyone. So it's better for like more junior people to be developed as well by like different styles and different peoples and different perspectives and different cultures and everything like that. Um, so I think it's super important. Um, I think it's important for like a company's culture as well, but also for for a company to create a culture that is inclusive is also important. Yeah, yeah. Because there's no point us at the top of the funnel bringing in like diverse candidates into our pipeline and hiring them and stuff like that if the environment you're bringing in them into isn't going to be inclusive and make them feel supportive and supported and that they can make decisions and give them input and stuff like that. Like uh, again, like we all like. Uh learn from our environment or from our different things we have seen or experiences so uh, definitely uh, diversity can be learned from anywhere right so again like uh, this this organization are trying to do that to make the company or the organization uh, grow faster because again like if we have a diverse team the mindset will be different the thought process will be different all together yeah. right you have lots of different inputs ideas and all those things you're not bringing them into an environment where they're going to be supportive they're just going to leave again that's true yeah so, yep. you know it just has a negative i suppose it's just like a negative outcome no matter what unless they're being brought into like an environment where they are going to be supportive supported and included um, and involved in different decisions. Like now, so. moving to the next question I have for you, Ifa, is definitely uh, recruitment is not that easy job as well, right? We have to find the right talent, right time, and for the right job as well, right? And sometimes it takes lots and lots of effort, right? And with effort, there are different challenges, right? Which might uh, be frustrating sometimes, or which might take lots of your energy and all so at those moments right what you do to control your frustration and how, how do you overcome those uh, I, like to, I like to see trends and things and like no pick up on things or pick up on different trends as well and know like this isn't working so this isn't the right way like if we keep doing this we're never going to get anywhere so I think we should be using that data as well to like influence our stakeholders so that we can move things in the right direction like if you just agree to everything you're told and just say yes then I don't think you're really being a partner to yep. the business that you're supporting so I think a lot of our role is to like be able to like look at data analyze it and use that data to like influence things to move in the right direction as well yeah, yeah, and and again, like we have to sometimes, like if we want to become a uh, respectable partner with our stakeholders, we it's not necessary that we agree all of the things they say. Sometimes we have to stand against them as well. But again, it's not for individual; it's about the company. Yeah, we have to support them as well, and like often, sometimes like listen to some of their challenges too, and like partner with them. So like come up with different ideas. Um, with them, you could be bringing them to to them directly, or just brainstorming with with your stakeholders too. Great. Uh, so, last question uh, of this podcast, uh, Ifa. So, why do you think uh, people need to be part of any community, or let's say since we are part of recruitment, why do you think people need to be part of a recruitment community? important to be part of a community so that you have somewhere to like go to like discuss different like challenges that you're facing i think your community is important to like celebrate wins with you as an individual as well um and people who have like common interests and goals and stuff like that as well so it's like it's like to feel like you're part of something i think belonging is like important for every yes every person really like outside of even just like your work so like be part of a community be part of a family be part of a team be part of a club um yeah so i think it's i think it's very important definitely great this uh i i just wanted to thank you and any last piece of advice for our audience before we wind up the call ifa <laughs> have fun yeah have fun ask questions and enjoy it
yeah, I think recruiting is like a roller coaster. It's full of ups and downs. No day is ever the same. Um, Thank you so much, Kifa, for your time. It was lovely talking to you. And once again, uh, after a long time, it it was wonderful seeing you and talking to you personally. It was Thanks great. so much. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks nice. for coming. Bye. 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 Bye.